Hey, what's up all of you beautiful subscribers? I'm Jack Chappell and today I have a shocking video for you guys. So we're gonna be focusing in here on financial advisors. We're gonna be touching on a few other investment rules too, but we're gonna focus in here on financial advisors. So, uh, someone I know that's close to me recently met with a financial advisor. Okay, so this person, uh, they go in, they meet with their financial advisor to help them out with money. They don't know too much about investing or saving. So, you know, it's better to have someone invest your money for you than to not invest at all. I get that. Okay, so this person goes in, there's an annual fee. It's small. It's like less than $100. So there's a less than $100 fee a year, which is fine, right? Less than $100 for someone to manage your money. That's okay. And pretty much they sent me another term here. So, and this is what we're gonna focus in here a little bit, okay? I'm gonna take two avenues here. So, they sent me another term where the financial advisor gets 2% of your entire portfolio per year. Meaning that your entire portfolio every year, whether it's worth $1,000, $100,000, whatever it is, they get 2%, regardless of how good they are with your money. So if they lose a bunch of money, they still get their 2%, okay? So this is part of the 2% rule that I'm talking about here, but we're gonna hold off on this for just one more second here. There are some financial advisors and a lot of hedge fund managers that also take 20% of your profits. So here's what I want you all to do first, before you go with a financial advisor, is make sure you read your contract that you are signing because this is gonna have a dramatic impact on some example I'm gonna show you here, okay? It's gonna have a very big impact on your financial future. So, uh, this person, this financial advisor, they rarely make a bunch of trades, right? These financial advisors, most of you, I don't know if you know this, but they, they make maybe a trade a month, right? If with your current money. Okay, they don't make a ton of trades. They pretty much just make the average, you know, four to six percent return every single year. So we're gonna do some math now, okay? We're gonna see what happens if you were to properly educate yourself and invest yourself and get this return, this average return, versus if you had the financial advisor take their cut every single year. Ready for this? This is insane. This is just with a small amount of money too, okay? So we're gonna have uh, advisor, so ADV versus no ADV. No ADV, okay? So, we're gonna say that every single year you put in $5,000 into this investment account. Now, if you had a financial advisor, a lot of the times they'll just take it right out of your accounts. Sometimes they'll take it right out of your paycheck. There's lots of uh, different avenues. So a lot of the times you don't really have a say in how much you invest actually, which is a little bit weird. But uh, moving on here, we're gonna say that they get a 6% return per year, 6% per year, All right, that's not bad, that's average. Uh, A little bit above average maybe for some people, a little bit below for others. And we're gonna say this happens over 30 years. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side here. There we go. So though the amount of money you put in is the exact same and you're just getting an average return on your investment in the stock market. That's all that's happening, okay? So with the no financial advisor here, pretty much after 30 years, so after 30 years, you will end up with roughly $424,000, 424K in that account. That's a good retirement account. It's not the best, but it's okay. It's enough to retire. So you have $424,000 after 30 years if you put away 5,000 a year and invest it normally, okay? Here's what happens if you use a financial advisor with this. All right, so we're assuming that they take their 2% per year of your entire portfolio. So after 30 years, after 30 years here, I wrote it down. The math on that works out to your portfolios were 296K. So just by not investing by yourself, you're losing $130,000. Think about this. The percentages, you're losing roughly, what, that's 25% of your entire portfolio right here, 30% is gone. Gone. Just because you're using, the, the advisor takes their fee. And I understand this. I'm gonna do some devil's advocate here. I get it. The advisor needs to make money. There's some positives to using financial advisors, but I'm just pointing this out here. Now, assuming they also take part of your profits, which some do, 
that also kind of works, that works out to roughly, if they do take profits, 270K. So we're talking $150,000 over the course of 30 years. That's getting up there to almost half your portfolio is gone just because you're using an advisor, okay? So this is part of the reason why it's very important that you guys educate yourselves on using the stock market. I'm gonna to get to something else here that's quite important too. Just hang on a second. So, um, as I was saying here, is that this is just the difference, but I mean, some financial advisors too, they will get a 5% return or a 4% return. Some will get 7% return, but 6% is pretty good. The lower the return that they get, the less money you make in the end, right? And so there's, I'm gonna just do a little bit of devil's advocate here. I guess I'll, I'll just jump into this actually. So the devil's advocate position is that if your options are use a financial advisor and be forced to invest your money and have a portfolio or have no advisor and you don't invest anything, then it's better to use a financial advisor. In that case, that is, that is true. If you're not going to invest, it is better to at least try to get an advisor so that you have something grow, okay? Um, but here's the problem. Here's the second important point here that I need you to think about. Your financial advisor is not an investor. They are not a someone, they're not someone that makes their money from investing. They're, they're not someone that's like, a, that's like a swing trader or a day trader, someone that only makes money if you make money. Here's how they make money. So they don't really care too much about how well your stocks do. They do a little bit because if you lose a bunch, if they lose a bunch of money, you might take your, your money out and they'll make less money. There's lots of reasons why, but to a certain extent, they don't care if you make the difference between 5% and 6%. For them, that's not gonna affect their bottom line. What affects their bottom line, if you've noticed, is how much money they have under management. All right? Because they make 2% of all the money they have under management. So if someone has a million dollars under management, that's 20 grand, right? If math on that's correct, about 20 grand that they make a year. If someone has you know, $10 million, 200 grand they make a year. Regardless of how well the portfolio does, that's where they make the money. So your financial advisor, in a sense, might be more of a salesperson they're actually, their main priority is not necessarily to make sure you get the highest return on investment. Their main priority is get as many people to use their, their advice to have, to give them their, to give them money, to have, to hold, to, to invest themselves. Their goal is to get as much money under management as possible. All right. That's the goal of someone who invests your money. Now, some of which I do understand get paid through a salary through like a bank. If you go to a bank, a lot of financial advisors there get, get some percentage of your growth, but also get a salary so they don't, don't take a big a chunk. I get that. But here's the problem, is that you run into situations where financial advisors, especially independent ones, run more of a, a sales machine rather than an investment machine. And sometimes it gets out of hand, like uh, this is extreme example is Bernie Madoff who just created this pyramid scheme essentially, where he just, all he really focused on was getting more people into his fund and then he'd print out these fake 25% returns every year and then he'd hand people out some money here or there if needed, but most people kept their money in because he was doing so well. So what I want you to think about when you choose to use a financial advisor or not is, is it worth potentially, you have two options really, if you want to invest money, use a financial advisor or educate yourself. And if you're watching this, you're probably trying to educate yourself and you're doing really well. But is it worth getting a financial advisor so you don't have to do any work or educate yourself and losing potentially 30% of your entire net worth by the time you retire? Or is it worth putting in a few weeks, a few hours here or there, learning about how to invest for yourself? That's what this all comes down to. Uh, financial advisors are not scams per se. I don't wanna say that because a lot of them are very helpful. But if you have the option of educating yourself and investing yourself 
versus using a financial advisor, then it looks like the financial advisor's pulling a little bit of a fast one here because they're taking roughly 30% of your entire portfolio without really doing much work apart from forcing you to invest your money. So this is all you're really doing. All you're really doing is paying 2% of your portfolio per year in order for you to be forced to invest your money. That's all you're doing. And imagine this. Imagine if we double that number to 10K per year. All of a sudden your advisor is getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, taking more of a percentage of your portfolio potentially. All of a sudden you might be losing, again, instead of losing out on $150,000, you might be losing out on $300,000. How would that feel? And this is only, again, $5,000 a year. You're only putting away about $450 a month. That's all this example is. $450 a month, I think that that was a good number because for the average middle class person, it takes home, what, roughly three to five grand a month. Uh, middle family, family income in the United States is what, $57,000, so that's about five grand a month. So $450 away from that five grand is possible, which is why I chose that 5K a year number. But again, if you're by yourself and you don't have a family, you don't have to support anyone, you might be putting away double that a year. So what I have to say is that um, I think it's better, if you can, educate yourself, invest for yourself, pick safe investment routes, which I have tons of videos on, by the way, in my stock market playlist, which I'll leave a link to. And um, try not to be risky. And uh, if you can, just, yeah, just educate yourself so that you don't lose hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. So um, please click on that stock market playlist video and please subscribe and hit the like video, like on this video if you did like it. And yeah, go click on that playlist and I'll see you guys in about five seconds.